In the last few days, the subject of shadow work has arisen several times for me with different people, and, like a recurring dream, perhaps this is an indication that this is a topic well worth addressing yet again. Especially given the time of the year, it's a good time to deal with old things as we move into the new year. So, what is meant when we say shadow selves? Shadows are aspects of the self that lie buried away in deep recesses. Psychology would say it's in the unconscious. But when you go deeper, understanding it from the perspective of the shaman, the dream yogin, the satanic outlook, they are literally pieces of one's soul that have fractured away. They are now in the shadows, so to speak, where you have no conscious awareness of them anymore. However, they still exist, are still a part of your soul, just parts that are unacknowledged, despised, feared, etc. Pieces of the soul can literally detach and become separate shards when a person has experienced trauma, especially at a young age. In fact, there is a thing called trauma-based mind control, which is a system that, was perf that has perfected this. They fracture people up into multiple personalities, shadow selves, that can then be programmed. This is a real thing is what I'm getting at. It's not woo-woo. This can happen even without anybody inflicting it deliberately, and we want to deal with these shards and heal ourselves. How do we heal this damage? What we as occult pr practitioners do then is find and dialogue with these pieces, then reintegrate them. There are several reasons why we might want to do this. Because there are parts that need reintegration in order to heal the whole, plus it takes a great deal of energy to keep these things hidden, so it's draining, plus these aspects of self affect your day-to-day -day life. You might not be consciously aware of it, but like an iceberg, while a significant portion of the shadows lie hidden beneath the surface, Parts will poke through into waking reality and still affect you. You won't know what it is or why, just see the effects of its presence. For an example, let us imagine that you have great difficulty bridging the gap between yourself and another person, any person, man or woman, trying to find a love partner. You think you are a perfectly reasonable person, not bad looking, intelligent, etc. And yet, try as you might, it never works out. Why? Well, when we get past surface things like perhaps trips to the gym, losing that spare tire, better hygiene, sharper wardrobe, when you get past surface physical things, now we're moving into the fact that everything is energy. Our shadows dwell in the deep ocean on an energetic level. They dwell in the right brain, in the intuitive side of things. We access the shadows via the right brain, yes, but what we're really talking about is happening on the energetic level. It's your soul. We are energetic beings connected into a force field of energy. Did you know that memory is not stored in the brain? It's stored outside the body. Because the soul is energetic. The shadow pieces are energetic, non-physical. The most effective method to access the shadows for dialogue is via the dream time, via lucid dreaming. This is referred to in the Tibetan Book of the Dead as the High Golden Road. It's most effective because you are in the astral and there, where thoughts, non-physical, are things, your shadow will be manifest in some form or other where you can literally confront it lucidly face to face and dialogue with it. As an aside, it's equally effective if you want to talk to the dead, as they too can be found here in the non-physical and, likewise, be engaged directly face to face via the high golden road. I have done this many, many times. But back to dream time and your shadow. In dream work, a common symbol that reflects across the board is the symbol for a home, a house, an apartment, a castle, etc. These can be interpreted on one level as a symbol of the self, your physical self, your home in the physical world, and that home has many rooms in it. In some of those rooms exist pieces of self rejected and locked away, like the mad 
cousin locked in the attic. Sometimes at night you can hear her screaming up there to be let out. But the thing is, these are shards of yourself. No matter how many times you physically run, try to move to a new city, for example, and start over, try to escape what dogs you, the same problems come back again. This is why. You can't run away from yourself. It's attached to you. The only way to deal with the shadows are to face them, to acknowledge and reintegrate these fractured and despised bits of self. There is a very big upside to doing this, building those walls, keeping them in place, spending all that time and energy running away takes energy. And the shadow you deny may be, when reintegrated, a powerful gift or talent that can then be put to work for you. So you gain by gaining more power, plus all that energy spent trying to wall it away is now freed up. The soul becomes more integrated. It's a win-win. Those rooms so carefully locked away and hidden can be opened up and explored. And while that can be downright terrifying, it can be rewarding. It takes commitment, strength, and fearlessness to dive into this work. But you may find you also unearth buried treasure. Aspects of your soul that Instead of chasing you around and causing you difficulties, you turn into an ally, a resource. As you absorb these frozen shards of soul, you gain all that power you didn't even know you had back. The most effective and powerful way to do this is via lucid dreaming. It's true. But you can begin right now by setting an intention before sleep. Set the intention that you wish to have dialogue with your shadow. Set the intention that you'll remember what comes in the dream. The universe, force, ether, whatever you want to call it, the probability field is sensitive to our intentions and thoughts. So when you project your intention into it, it will hear you and respond. This is also exactly how one does magic. You set the intention into the action, in this case, laying down to sleep with a conscious desire in your mind. No fear, no doubt, the thing is done, and it is. Expectation, desire, and will. Desire to speak to your shadow. Will it to be so. Expect it to be so, and it is. We do this all the time setting intentions and expectations and putting it out there into the ether. We just don't realize it. We put things out there and then it happens. So when, for instance, you tell yourself, I always seem to screw things up. I can't have a lover. It happens. It's what you expected. You may say, but I never remember my dreams. Persevere. Set the intention as you go to sleep that you will remember. Begin keeping a dream journal. Dream work is a practice like doing meditation or yoga. Write down the intention in your journal that you are ready to heal and integrate your shadows. This is going to take time. This isn't a quick fix. I did this kind of work for a decade, for instance. It's time to record what you dreamed is right after you wake up. You're still halfway in the dream time when you first wake up. Just write down whatever comes to you and don't filter. Be as detailed as possible. Write what the action was in the dream, but be sure to include the feelings these things stirred in you. It's a big key to what's going on. Notice the time of day. Was it day? Night? If there was weather, what was it? Stormy? Clear? etc. Where were you? Dreams will give clues to what is going on inside. Give clues to what shadows are haunting you and guidance as to, as to how to go about integrating them. We gain awareness as we go. This leads to greater understanding, personal empowerment, return of vitality, and joy. Whatever experience you have is okay. It's a direct revelation. 
experiences are individual. The gods give you your own unique experience. This is a journey into a hidden world. In that place, you'll sometimes see and hear, etc., just as we do in this world. The experienced occult practitioner can consciously transfer awareness from the physical into the astral, but we all have different strengths and abilities. Don't compare what others see to what you don't and then feel discouraged. We tend to get very serious and rational, logical. We think there are rigid rules and rituals that must accompany interaction with the unseen. Sure, there are different meditations and breathing techniques that help us get there, but communication itself is not like that. Communication with non-physical beings like spirits, like the gods, is not a logical process. It's illogical because it's intuitive. Intuitive magic comes from the right brain, not the left. It's like if you're ballroom dancing with a special partner. If you dance looking into their eyes and nowhere else, it's magic. But if you're dancing watching everyone else, wondering if you're doing it right, or if anybody is watching you critically, the magic's gone. Just relax and get into the dance. Communication with the unseen, with the gods, with the spirits, is like magic. It's intuitive. It's spontaneous. We move into the invisible senses, the third eye, the astral ears, tapping into the clairs, clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentience, clairsent, clairtangency, clairgustance, clairempathy, and start operating from those senses. This is a real challenge for the average person in the Western world. You'll find yourself thinking it's no use, it's all my imagination, what am I doing? Just gently persist to try again. Western world people are so used to TV and movies, they question everything that doesn't look like a movie. If I can't see anything, then I'm doing it wrong, they think. But communication can come with a sudden knowingness. It can come with hearing a sudden sentence in your mind a thought voice you know isn't your own. It can be the sensation of warmth, of lightness, of wellness. It can be a gentle touch, a kiss, the scent of violets, wild roses. A scent can conjure up something for you, give you a message. Whatever way communication comes, just try to be open-minded and don't censor. Sometimes that weird detail that embarrasses you or seems stupid in the dream turns out to be highly significant later. Relax, it's supposed to be fun. It doesn't have to be serious. Laugh and write it down in the dream book. This is why when I see very serious people with tons of props, I kind of feel like they're missing the point. Then, like I said, it's all personal. If that's what it takes for you to feel relaxed and in the mood, so be it. My feeling on it is you don't need props. They're nice to have. They can help get you in the mood. But I would say, no, you already possess the best instrument available, your body. We are like antennas. We are designed to pick up on energy and vibrations. It's as natural as breathing. Here's a, a link to a page describing the clairs. And I'm just going to click on that really quickly and open her up. And I'm going to just read the descriptions here. Um, this is from quantumpossibilities.biz. Okay. And it's called the clairs. So, um, the first one was clairvoyance. Clairvoyant meaning clear vision to reach into another vibrational frequency and visually perceive within the mind's eye something existing in that realm. 
All right, so a clairvoyant is one who receives extrasensory impressions and symbols in the form of inner sight or mental images, which are perceived without the aid of the physical eyes and beyond the limitations of ordinary time and space. These impressions are more easily perceived in an alpha state and during meditation, though many clairvoyants can obtain visual information regarding the past, present, and future in a variety of environments. Clear audience, which means clear audio or hearing, is to perceive sounds or words and extrasensory noise from sources broadcast from spiritual or ethereal realms in the form of an inner ear or mental tone which are perceived without the aid of the physical ear and beyond the limitations of ordinary time and space. These tones and vibrations are more easily perceived in an alpha state and during meditation though many clear audience can obtain verbal and sound related information regarding the past, present and future in a variety of environments. Clairsentience Clairsentience, clear sensation or feeling, to perceive information by a feeling within the whole body without any outer stimuli related to the feeling or information. Clear scent, clear smelling, to smell a fragrance, odor of substance or food which is not in one's surroundings. These odors are perceived without the aid of the physical nose and beyond the limitations of ordinary time and space. Clear tangency, which is clear touching. More commonly known as psychometry, to handle an object or touch an area and, and perceive through the palms of one's hands information about the article or its owner or history that was not previously known. Clear gustance, clear tasting. To taste a substance without putting anything in one's mouth, it's claimed that those who possess this ability are able to perceive the essence of a substance from the spiritual or ethereal realms through taste. And then there's clear empathy. This one's clear emotion. An empath is a person who can psychically tune into the emotional experience of a person, place, or animal. Clear empathy is a type of ailment of another person or entity. That includes animals, I would have to add. Uh, empaths tune into the vibrations and feel the tones of the aura. Now, then they also go on to, um, to describe what channeling is. And this is, uh, that, that's as far as I'm going to go. And that was from quantumpossibilities.biz. So you can go check that out if you want. All right, so back to, uh, my article. On the bottom of the list, you'll see they mention channeling. However, personally, I don't recommend channeling, most especially not for people completely new to occult working. I feel one should never offer the use of their personal temple, the body, to any passing spirit. It's a dangerous thing to do. And as for the gods, they will refuse to do so, use you so, because it's a kind of trespass and there's no need for it. There are better ways to communicate. Channeling, allowing a non-physical being to enter into your body and use it. It's like throwing open the doors to your house and inviting whatever happens to be passing by in. And usually what you get are the astral versions of street people. The gods, demons, are highly advanced energy beings. They would never stoop to possession. If you offer to them, use my body, they'll tell you no. Anything that is trying to convince you to accept them using your body like this is probably something you don't want to be encouraging. Just say no. I never give permission for anything to use my body this way. I have personally witnessed the results that can come when people have done so, and the outcome in each case was not positive. Take the high golden road instead via the dream time. Start dream journaling, setting intentions to remember, intentions that you wish to dialogue with your shadow. Don't censor what comes. Remember, it took years to build the walls. It will take time to break them down again. 
Rome was not built in a day, as they say. Be gentle with yourself. Energy work is hard work. You are doing the best you can, so don't beat yourself up if you aren't getting instant results. It's a process. When you face your shadow, tell it, what can I do for you? How can I help you? How to reintegrate it? Hold out your hands to it. Tell it, I'm sorry I pushed you away. I want you back. Hug it or just touch it. It will melt into you. Write down whatever comes. Many times it won't be clear at the time you write, but when you review later, things will sometimes click and make sense. You'll get insights. I've experienced this. Some silly detail and then later on it suddenly comes clear and you have a wow moment. This is a practice, a journey. The journey begins when you commit to yourself that you are worth the effort and take that first step on the road to discovery. I encourage you to do it because you're worth it. High Priestess, Solo Lucky Star, Truth for Satan Ministries. My wisdom is not separate from my heart. Satan.